Hello and uh, welcome back. Today we will be having our lecture 2 for this module 4. In this module as I told you we are talking about functions, function literals, scalars provided higher order functions, the way we cl use closure in functional programming and a lot more to learn about how functional programming is, is implemented in Scala. This is our lecture 2. In our very first lecture, we have learned about Scala's functional literals. We have used them. One of the examples that I gave you is increment by 1, in which you know you have whatever value came to you as an integer, you have incremented that and written back the result. And we have used that functional literal. We have also practiced higher order functions. We know that now our functions can return functions and our functions can pass functions as a parameter. In this lecture, we will be taking a look at a few more concepts that fun functional programming provides us. One of them is uh, closures. Then we, we will be also taking a look at partial functions and uh, partially applied functions. And we will be uh, practicing all those. We will also take further or high order functions because that part needs a lot, a lot of practice for you to grasp. I would request you to practice as much as you can. And uh, for now, let's go ahead and talk about the lecture's objective. So as I told you, in this lecture, we will be taking a look at the closures concept. Closure, almost all functional languages has this concept. We have Haskell, which has closure, then Scala uses uh, closures a lot. There are some scenarios when your function might need to have a parameter that is not passed as a formal one and but it is it uh, resides in the current scope and we can use them. That is called closure. We will, uh, we will try to get acquainted with this concept very soon. Then we will be talking about partial and partially applied functions. We will take a look at how these are implemented in Scala. We will also practice and uh, have an example for the same. So first, what is a closure? We are talking about functional programming. We have learned functional function literals. So this has to do something with functions, isn't it? And yes, indeed. A closure is a function whose return value depends on value of one or more variables declined outside this function. Did you understand? Okay, so uh, when I say a closure is a function whose return value depends on the value of one or more variables declared outside this function. Let's pick up the keywords into this one. First is a function. So closure is a function. Okay, it returns a value. And then it depends on the value of one or more variables declared outside this function. So we have variables and this is outside. It means that this particular variable is not going to be declared in this function or not even passed as a formal parameter. Okay, so we have three or four keywords into this definition of a closure. We know that is it is a function we know that it is going to return something or uh, maybe it's a unit may uh, it means in Scala it is not going to return anything but still we may expect something out of that. Then we have a variable so that variable has to be declared outside this function. So if you declare a variable inside the function that does not make it a closure and if it's a it's variable it's a variable that is declared outside it means that uh, the current scope or the current value of that variable will be executed in that function. So whenever that function is getting executed, the current value that variable is going to have will be passed into that function and that will be executed. Let's take an example. Suppose we have, uh, suppose we have this uh, value multiplier. It's a functional literal, function literal, okay. It's expecting i and integer and it is multiplying that value with 10 and returning back. 
So if you pass 2 into this multiplier, it will multiply by 10 and 2 and it will give back result as 20. But this is not an example of a closure. Just because it is not using any variable outside this function, we have only one variable declared using, uh, like we are using only one variable that is i and it has been passed as a formal parameter. So how we can change this functional literal to make it a closure? Let's take a look at that. This is an example of a multiplier but in a closure form. We have this value that is the uh, same way we are passing an i that's an integer and we are multiplying that integer by this a factor. What is this? This is a variable which hasn't been declared right now but it has to be because in our closure we are going to use that. So let's define that one. Now we have a variable, a factor and its value as 10. We can give it any value that we want and it is going to work. And this value, this variable is not declared in the function. We are not passing it as a parameter. Okay. So this makes an example of a closure. But remember the keywords. This variable has to be declared outside this function. That makes it a closure. Another part, if we talk about the same thing, we know that this function have to be, or a function that's a closure, have to be able to refer to one or more fields that were in the same scope as the function it, when it was declared. Okay, so when you use this particular closure, you need to make sure that this uh, factor variable is residing in the same scope. It, 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 we have or this closure is going to have access of this a factor variable when it is going to get executed. Let's open our uh, IntelliJ IDEA and uh, we will take a look and practice these closures. Here we have this uh, object df main that we have created it is extending application okay as you know to run main method we need to extend this app that will be working as an entry point to our Scala application so first we will be creating a class okay that class will be having an execute method which will be taking a function as a parameter and that execute method is also going to take any uh, parameter maybe say a string and that will execute the function with that string so let's go ahead and like create a scala class we will name it as executor so it's there okay so let's create a method name execute it's going to take a function and the function is going to take a string and we is going to return unit and we also have this value string parameter okay and what it's going to do is very simple it's going to execute the function with this value let's name it execute one because it's taking only one value apart from this uh, function okay we'll also have the same method with two parameters we will name it as execute two same way it's going to take a function from uh, string it's not gonna give you anything that's why we are writing unit then we'll expect value 1 and value 2 that's also going to be a string okay and what it's going to do is it will execute the same function that we are passing 
with these two parameters value 1 and value 2 okay this function is going to take two values okay so we have our executor class we will create an object of this particular class and use these methods execute 1 and execute 2 and as you can see we have this function literal as uh, an argument so this is an example of a higher order function so as I told you you will be practicing these a lot while writing functions in Scala so let's go to our main class what we are going to do here is uh, we will have a variable that is going to work as uh, the argument that we are going to pass and let's say it's hello and we have this value hello next what we are going to do is we'll have a definition a method it's going to say hello it's gonna take a name and what it's going to do is simple it's going to print the name along with the value hello okay then we have a space then the name and now we will be creating an uh, executor object we'll use new executor so we have an object of executor in this value we will be calling its method executor dot execute one we will pass only one function and a string let's say wick so we have this executor and we are passing this say hello function and this name okay so executor will execute this with this function literal say hello method and this wick that's a string and you should be getting the value printed with hello wick because this is the value we currently have in this variable so let's run it and as you can see the result we have this hello value and then the string that we have passed so what happened here we are using closure and this variable is not used in this function say hello okay so the scope of this one is outside of this function we can see the block it doesn't have any formal variable apart from name it's only using this name and then we have this hello variables value as well okay if you change it suppose we here we have the same variable hello just because it's a variable we can change the value inside it we will say hola and then we have this executor method executing the same thing here let's check what is going to be the result and you are gonna get hola wick so this name parameter is going to remain the same because it is same it is holding same value as wick the time you say you change the value in this hello variable your closure will be able to understand because the current scope is having the value hola and that's why you can see the result that's going to have hello value as this one okay so that's how closures work now that we have an idea about closures and function literals and we have also worked on higher order functions now it's time to know about partial functions so what are they a normal function may be defined for any values any set of values so if you have a function increment by one you can pass any integer and your function will be incrementing that integer to one and give back the result a partial function is different from a normal function how 
because it is defined for certain values or certain number of values of the defined type. So if you have a function that expects an integer and if it has to be a partial functions, it will accept only few integers. There will be some constraint defined for which you can use a partial function. So let's take an example. We have this value even, so that's a function and we are defining it as a partial function that is going to take an integer and send back the string response. We are also using this, this case keyword and the value that is going to come as in i and we are going to use an i in that function. So if it is an even means it is divisible by divisible by 2 you will be having the return string value as even. So this is an example of a partial function. While using it, you may give a call to even like this. We have a value num that's also a function literal that takes an integer and converts that into a string. And we are calling this even. Then we have this or else keyword that's a method that we will be using a lot with these partial functions and then we have this case statement and this underscore as you know works as a wildcard so whatever value of an integer comes except if it's an even integer it will make it an odd one and return back the result as odd so you can see we have these few things first we have the way we define it second we can use or else and is defined at and some more helper methods provided by partial function trait. So why do wait? Let's go ahead, open our IntelliJ idea and practice for the same partial functions and know how to define these. Here we have the same main DF main object. So what we will do is we will define a partial function first. We will use the same example that we have just seen. Let us define a value even that's a partial function and it is defined for integer and string. We'll have this i because that's going to be an integer. Then if i modulus 2 is equal equal to 0 it means the value is going to be even and we can use and while using it we'll have val num and then we will be defining this value as even and that it's going to take an uh, integer and convert that into a string so we have this number ready so why not print it so we'll use num and then we'll pass it an integer we will try to run this program And have we got this number is an even one. Let's change it to 11 and check. Now let's get, give it an odd one. So this is how we can define a partial function. Okay, let's take another example. We have discussed that partial functions are defined basically for a limited number of uh, input values. Okay, so the formal parameters, suppose we are using only an integer and converting into a string. So there is a limited number of integers that can be passed to this particular function. Okay, to define it as an even or an odd number. So 
how to use it efficiently. For that purpose, we have some methods that we can redefine or override. And let's take an example for the same. Suppose we have a function divide by x, okay, and that is going to that is going to be a partial function of type integer and integer. And let's define it. So we have first an apply method. What it's going to do is apply. It's going to take an integer, let's say value x, and uh, return back one, let's say 20 divided by x. Okay, that's the definition, so we will use this one. Then we have another method, say is defined at. So divide by any value is not going to be defined at zero. So let's take if it's an uh, integer x. So that value will be x cannot be zero. Okay, so is defined at will be true if x value is not equal to zero. So this is how we can define an, a partial function. And if you want to use it, we have this syntax. Suppose you want to give a value, a number, and you want to define, divide that by, like if you, and you want to use divide by x partial function. So let's use it. Uh, first we will use if, we'll use divide by x dot is defined at, if it's defined at seven, then just divide this for me by seven. We'll also use if value is defined at zero, and we will use this method from divide by x dot is defined at, and we'll pass zero value, and we'll check. We will check the value of these two numbers. We will check the values of these two values uh, numbers. So first, I'm going to print ln a number. Then I'm going to print ln. This is defined at zero. So it has to be true because you cannot divide any number by zero. Okay, so I'm going to run this method. So for now, I'm going to comment this part. And other things we will have the same. Okay, so we will try to run this. And you can see the values two and false. And then is defined at zero is false. So you cannot define this divide by x function at zero value. So this is how we can use these define is defined at and apply methods from partial function trait and make it more readable and effective. Another way to use these partial functions is to use it in chain. So we can give a, val a chain of values and use these partial functions. So uh, next we will take a look at that. So, so we'll have a value one that's going to be a partial function of type int and string. It is going to give you a value one if it's one that's going to be a string okay and if it's let's define these for two and three So now we have three values, three partial functions named one, two, and three defined for three values. So if it's uh, one, it will be one, two for two, three for three. And for any other, we'll have, we'll have, we will call it any. 
that's also going to be a partial function it will take any value any integer value and tell you some other number okay so we'll have a fun uh, value function literal that is going to be uh, we will name it one two three or any okay we done small n and we will define it in chain so we'll use one or else two or else three or else any and this is gonna work so we will try to print this thing as well we'll use print ln then we'll call one two three or any first we will have one passed we'll use three then we'll use five four okay and we will try to print these things so let's run this program and you can see one three and some other numbers because just because we did not pass two it gave us several, uh, some other number so this is how these uh, function partial functions work so i think now we have a basic idea about function literals high order functions then we also learned about closures and then we have just seen partial functions next we will be taking a look at partially applied functions next we will be learning about partially applied functions this topic is uh, different than the partially defined functions that we have just seen it means to apply a function partially we have example of a partially applied function first you can see a normal function literal we have reference na uh, named it sum it's saying three integer parameters it's summing them up and giving back the result next we have another function literal that is going to work as a partially applied function because we are using the already defined function and uh, we are still passing one more parameter okay so this is going to use some function with these two predefined values and the third values as yet to be defined and when using that we will pass the value and we'll get back the result so you can see we have defined only few or we I would say we have given only few values from the previously defined function and few parameters were left blank for the example the C is left blank and that's how it is different from normal function literal and that is why we call it partially applied because partially we have given values some will remain blank so that's how we use partially applied functions so we'll use the same example and try to execute it into our, into our IntelliJ idea so we will define our partially applied function okay so uh, let's first define a value sum that's going to take three integers say a b and c and it's going to give back the summation of these three then we have another partially applied function and it is going to call this sum function by passing two random or any values that you want and third one will be defined later when we call this pa function and we can use this directly calling pa function that is our partially applied function and only one parameter was remain blank so we will be passing only one value let's pass 20 here and try to run this whole and get the result and you can see the value 56 
So this is how we define partially applied functions. So uh, this was the last topic of this lecture and we have covered closures, partial functions and we also know about partially applied functions. So we know that how partially defined and partially applied functions are different. We also call partially func defined functions as partial functions. Okay, so let's wrap up this lecture by going through the lecture summary that we have. So uh, we have learned about closures in this lecture. We know this concept pretty much and we have also practiced even in our very last lecture that was uh, lecture one for module we have uh, seen this concept when we use that perform on uh, collections length method we were also using the closure thing then we have uh, taken a look at partial and partially applied functions so we know the difference between these two we have practiced but it is not enough I would request you again and again, just like I used to, you should practice these functions, try to get a, an essence of it, get acquainted with all the new concepts that we are learning with every lecture. So for now, I would say thank you and happy learning. Bye-bye.